Good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. It's summertime and it's almost over. Wow. What are we going to do when it's over? We're going to freeze because winter will be here. New England. Summer, winter. No spring or fall. No in between. But that's okay. We've got lots to talk about. So all kinds of wonderful things are going to be going on. So just to be nice, there's an election coming up. If you're not registered to vote, I'd be glad to help you. Just reach out to me and I'll come and sit with you. It'll take us three to five minutes. We'll register you to vote. Then you can go vote for whoever you want. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You all know who I want. Well, maybe you don't, but I'm not going to tell you. But it's important that we vote, okay? Have your say. Speak your mind. So tonight, we have an amazing, amazing performer. Again, should I say that Terry Lachance is the reason that we have this amazing performer. You know, she's going to have to start paying me for saying her name on this show every single week. I'm going to tell her that too, that she has to start paying me. So she has an open mic at a place called the Buttonwood. Am I right? Yeah. But I don't understand how this musician ended up at the Buttonwood, which is out in East Yupipi, the other side of the state, because this musician happens to come from our side of the state. Not just our side of the state, but my favorite city in the world, New London. And they're going to play for us in a way that I'm pretty sure you have never heard, because this young performer is doing originals that tell the truth. And I love that. So please, sit back, get a little beverage if you choose to, snuggle with your dog, as I choose to, and open your ears and your heart to the musings of Alex Reed. So, yeah, all of these are gonna be originals. Um, this first one is on one that I wrote um, a little while ago, and it is kind of about my own uh, personal beliefs involving uh, a higher being and uh, the afterlife and all of that, um, which is uh, kind of a lot different from the ideas that I was raised with, uh, but it's called God's Enemy. Family won't forget me, can't say I didn't try My chest feels so empty, I wish that I could lie The only love that I could feel is a breath away from breaking It's forever life, truly real And I just sink into hell with my dying bright Strip my pride away, and now God's out of my Taking this new day Words seem to elude me, I scream to the eye. It's all the facet of my mind, I see. I couldn't make it if I died. Tremble from the words I've spoken, a pain I never felt. Through those days I were cut and broken, I'd only be a shout. The rest would be in hell with my dying bride. Strip my pride away, and now God's out of my taking this new day. I 
remember to write, so just give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up back to hell with my dying bride. Strip my pride away. Now God damn it. next one is one that I wrote, um, kind of inspired by my relationship with my siblings a little bit, as well as my relationship with um, just the, the other people in my life. Um, I wrote it right after I went on a sibling retreat with them um, just this last July, a uh, little cabin in the woods over in uh, Washington, uh, Oregon, right off of Mount Hood. A lot of fun, but it got me thinking about a lot of stuff. Um, so this is called Black Sheep, and it's in a style that's a little bit different from what I usually write, but I just really felt like it, so. Punch was spiced and it felt a different color. Just to sell us and the birds were getting louder. We played cards and such and might have won a game, but the day would end, you would say my name. I was a black sheep in a field of stark white coats, and he said, Follow me, I'd go wherever he'd go. But I don't know. Got to talking in a thought that this was different. Started laughing and I took back the last statement. Showed up on the tree, I should have had a branch, but you had fun around me, I could never understand. Was a black sheep in a field of star quite cold, and he said, Follow me, I'd go wherever he'd go. But I don't know Whoa 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 The shepherd got lost in the rain did fall in at the end of the day I don't care at all Black sheep in a field of golden grain. Look inside me, and I'm just not the same. And that's okay. I'm a black sheep in a field of golden grain. Look inside me, and I'm just not the same. Not the same. Not the same. Not the same. Then uh, this next one I wrote, um, kind of at, uh, for a hard time in my life, um, about a, a year ago, I actually got, uh, I was staying with my, my uncle and his family um, for a little bit, um, but then things just really didn't work out while I was there, um, and this is kind of like a song just venting my frustrations about that. Uh, so it's called A Silence I Know. 
Trust is easily taken, but not something I could give. That's because they told me I thought that I could live on my own by my own feelings. Silence I'd relent. What do you expect? Haven't seen sun in 15 years. Dust is a warm blanket and voices carry fear. Where's home supposed to be? Halls would echo with contempt. Forever means nothing when no one even wept. Silence is all I know, so what more do you want from me? Then I stay up all night Your laughter is thunder Sorry I can't stay tight Said we're family, that means everything Learn to accept What do you expect? Haven't seen sun in 15 years Dots is a warm blanket And voices carry fear What is home supposed to be? The halls would echo with contempt Forever it means nothing When no one even wept Silence is all in all So what more do you want from me? Five, you liars, not my sister, you just missed her I gave you everything I was doing so you know it was ruined Didn't tell me what you want, I've got that you want Didn't mean to pick a fight, can't you see that I was right? More do you want from me, more do you want from me? What do you expect? Haven't seen time in 15 years Dust is a warm blanket and voices carry fair What is home supposed to be? The halls would echo with contempt Forever the way with ending music not normal by the way that's always a good thing all right uh this next one is um it's a little bit funner uh more lighthearted. it's one that i wrote about a guy that i knew when i was in middle school um and he asked me to be his valentine and he was just it was a really bad time and he was a good friend and he reminded me a lot of my brother and it just yeah it, it, it just really wasn't a great time. So this song is kind of about that and kind of about how just I felt bad the whole time. Um, but this is called Bad Time. I was choking on my tongue, hacking curses at the sun. I took and read your letter thinking there was nothing but a smiled and agreed I'm gonna see you on your knees. I took a bullet from my name, tried to kiss it by the pain. I liked you all the same, though you had to take the strain. Maybe 15 years later, we could have been together. When I pour the jars for the last time, a bad time. Hands in my pockets, chilling steam in the air. I saw a mistake, I wanted to take care, but I like girls, not guys, I wouldn't tell you a lie. Took a bullet from my name, tried to kiss him by the pain. And maybe 15 years later we could have been together When I apologize for the last time A bad time Bad time Bad time Bad time on the track said you know what you like you followed my lead when i was in need she said thanks for helping you she didn't know i wasted you took a bullet from my name tried to kiss me by the vein i liked you all the same though you had to take the stride maybe 15 years later could have been together 
apologize for the last time. Bye time. Bye time. Bye time. Took a bullet from my name, tried to kiss me by the pain. I liked you all the same, though you had to take the strain. Fifteen years later, we could have been together and apologize for the last actually raised Mormon uh, in a Mormon household. Very strict, not fun. Um, I am no longer Mormon, um, but this song is about that and my experience with it. And anyone who is Mormon or has read the Book of Mormon or has taken seminary classes or anything like that may recognize some of the things with this. There are some references. Um, it's called Light of the World. We are the light, the light of the world, and we won't fall to the fate of the world. I go to church, sip on the water, spit to the father, eight years old. I took the piss, empty to the depths of the place, and I used to know. The cold, the cold, go, 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 go. We are the light, the light of the world. We won't fall to the pains of the world. Rockle and mission, shoots my heart point blank. Learn to tie and loop and knot. I call to arms, I wield an eye. Saves my life with a sneer if I'm like cry. Try, 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 try. We are the light, the light of the world. We won't fall to the pains of the world. Light is light is strife. This next one is actually the only love song that I've ever written and may very possibly be only ever the only love song that I will ever write. <laughs> um, love songs are not my thing, but <laughs> uh, this one I like. It's about um, someone who used to be very dear to me. Um, and yeah, this, this is dedicated to them. I will not say who because I was admiring them from a distance and that is... How it should have stayed, and I'm glad that it stayed that way. But anyway, this is called Stars After Sunset. Larks on the street, they glitter in your head. You toss it everywhere you go. You want something sweet, or take one with sun and watch everyone you know. You can only see the stars after sunset, so I hang on to this never-ending day. The squares on the board, we tension in the air if we ever dare to care at all. These thoughts we record give shape to our lives when I really can't find the gold. You can only see the stars after sunset, but it ain't to tear the light away. Is it too much to see you smile? Too much to say I miss you? 
maybe every once in a while you'll let me hold you time i can see you find something better in the others and forget about me make no reason i'll always remember our time spent together by the sea you can only see the stars after sunset won't this moment last forever anyway you are my This next one I'm going to do is one of my older ones, actually. Um, I performed it once, but it's, it's softer, and it's about a really uh, dark time in my life. That I, um, uh, around the time I was 13, I was, I was dealing with some stuff, and this is just kind of an ode to that. And it's called, uh, What is Real? North Scott, sing story, say it's all right, lifting me up. Stark boy mine, seeing people all the time, bleeding darts. Falling rain, saying pain, I forget. Humble words like Jesus, by smiles and verses they don't see. Screaming at you, leave me, you follow and touch me, I'm not free. Find a way, not to die, shackled hands. A wave of mysteries, tale of disguise, what is real? of sorrow, I'll come back tomorrow, bleed me dry. Old songs of old days, and I sing my praises, maybe I'll stay. Take me down, hold me close, like a moist. What is real? do one more song and then come talk to me sure <clears throat> all right well this last one um so i i used to work as a waiter in an uh, assisted living 
And, you know, every, I would work the night shift, so every night I would just sort of be, uh, you know, doing, doing my routine, clearing up the tables and uh, rolling the silverware and everything. And um, while I was doing that, that was often the time when I would think up new song ideas in my head. Um, and so this is one um, that came about while I was doing that. And I don't even remember what it was, but I was just thinking about, like, contradictions. Like, there are some things in my life that I'm like, okay, people tell me to do it one way, but then I just, I, they, they also want me to do it the other. And how does that exactly work, you know? I mean, it, it has a thing with me, like, not understanding uh, social things or people, or things that most people would understand normally. But anyway, this song is all about that, and it's called um, Contradictions. How can a girl without taking advantage? How can I take initiative without doing too much? How can I smile without seeing greed? How can I slow without losing speed? Fall and I grow Learn what I know To be perfect Without being part How can I joke without being mean? How can I rest without being lazy? How can I listen without being quiet? How can I be fine without being all right? Fall and I grow, learn what I know to be perfect without being perfect. How can I be fast without being slow? How can I be brilliant without a show? How can I wake up without sleeping? How can I kill without weeping? All these questions without answers, all this confusion without hope, all this grief without closure, all these stories that I wrote, all these systems like pages, empty stairs, I can't get what they say about me, think about me, watching me, they're killing me! screaming how can i try without succeeding how can i fly without falling how can i live and not bleed Noise. So while Alex is uh, putting their guitar down and coming over, let's talk about some stuff. So I want to 
give you a forewarning. November 2nd at the Hygienic from 2 to 6, Dot Ames, not Grandma's Attic, Dot Ames is throwing a fundraiser. Why am I throwing a fundraiser? Because November 13th is New London Celebrates World Kindness Day. More will be revealed, but be at the Hygienic on November 2nd for lots of great music. Bring a wallet full of money. We're going to have some great raffles, and it's a fundraiser. So raffles, pay to get in because every penny earned is going to go to support what we're going to do on New London Celebrates World Kindness Day, which is November 13th. Right after the election, it's going to be perfect timing for us to celebrate kindness. So uh, there's a heads up. Let's talk to Alex. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Grandma's Attic. Thank you. Are you a little nervous? A little. Not, <laughs> not a lot. How did you end up at the Buttonwood? Well, there really aren't that many um, open mic opportunities okay. around, um, and even less that accept people who are under drinking age. Oh, well, yeah. Yep. Um, so, Buttonwood was one that I found, and I do a lot of driving already, so I'm like, an hour drive is, it's, it's nothing. It really doesn't matter okay. to me. Yeah. So, I'm just going to tell you that the Custom House is here in New London. Mm -hmm. Do you know about the customer? Yes, which is okay. only once a month on know, Sundays, which I'm not still, usually available. It's this Sunday. Yes. But you're not available? Well, uh, it's so you make it available. I can be. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of those things like, I can, but maybe not? <laughs> well, okay, the deal is, um, I'm a, I earn most of my income through um, Uber deliveries. All right, so that's driving. I'm a delivery driver for a living. Um, and Sunday nights are the best day to go out and do that. Oh, so, I did not know that. Yes, weekends people like to stay in. Um, a lot of them don't like to cook. They're with their families or whatever. Right, right, They're not right, working, right. so you know, they order in. They order through Uber Eats. Sunday nights are the best time to go, which is right during the custom mic, custom yeah. house open I get mic. It. I yeah. get it. So like, I, I I could figure out a way to do that, especially just like once a month. But it's, yeah. Got to pay the bills. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, little self-disclaimer, it has nothing to do with me. My wife was raised Mormon. Mm -hmm. And um, just for the record, she is no longer Mormon either. Uh, <laughs> they kind of frowned upon the fact that she gave birth to children that were darker skinned than her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't let her bring them to church because they were of mixed race. I mean, I've never heard of that. From it the was crazy. Church. So I mean, it, it would make sense if she wasn't married. She wasn't. That, that would be why. Um, because it's abstinence before marriage. So um, if you, you know, have sex before you get married, then any kids that you have from that are like... Shunned. Yeah, pretty it's much. It's a thing. Yes. It's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's a thing. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering about your middle middle school friend that uh -huh. wanted to have a, a friendship, or maybe more than. Yeah. How is that for you? Not good. <sighs> well, <It's> it was <laughs> it was a bad time in my life. Um, yeah, you were going for, through some stuff. Yeah, I was going through stuff. Um, also, it was a time when I was questioning my sexuality, so I didn't really know Absolutely. how I identified in regards to that. And then it was also a time, I was in middle school, right? Again, bringing the Mormon thing, we aren't allowed to date until we turn 16. So. The whole thing. The whole, the whole thing, thing was like, Egh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. I really liked him. And like, we still talked and stuff. And I ended up doing like this whole, um. It was an ensemble that I was putting together because it was it was eighth grade and it was a tradition that like every eighth grade class in our school orchestra, um, we would put together some kind of gift for our um, orchestra director, you know, to say goodbye and you know yeah, yeah, to whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I was the one in charge of that, and um, he was one of the few who like decided to help me out with that and everything. So, you know, we spent time together, but man, I just I felt bad. It's a thing. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. 
So you grew up in, in Washington State. Yes. That's a whole world away from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. How did you end up in my favorite city in the world, New London? Well, that's kind of a long story. Um, I am actually a Navy veteran. Okay. I, uh, when I got out of high school, I served in the Navy for a year. Uh, then I got out for medical stuff. Um, and I came up to Connecticut. So I, I was serving in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, but then they told me, we can send you wherever you want to go when you get separated, as long as it's either home or like less of a flight than home, like closer than that. So I'm like, well, Connecticut is closer than Washington, so they'll have no problem sending me there. Um, I actually have a friend who lives in New Haven who I really wanted to see um, and be closer to. So that was a big part of the deciding factor. And then also my uncle that I said that I stayed with, um, he's a retired um, Navy veteran. Okay. Um, and so he helped me out with all my... We got some Navy stuff going on around here. Yeah. Um, we do. Yeah, he helped me out with all my separation stuff, and he lives up oh. in uh, Gales Ferry. So. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice, nice, nice. When I left there, I so, came to New London. Welcome to mm -hmm. New London, Connecticut. Um, this is, as I said before, my favorite city in the world. Um, and it's good to know that there's good music coming out of someone that's residing in my city. And I say good music because number one, it's original. Um, I, I don't mind cover people, I don't. I don't mind them. But if you, look on, if you look on Facebook, there's a picture of me listening to cover bands out in clubs. There's a picture of me, yeah, listening to cover bands. You'll get, you'll get a full, feeling of how mm -hmm. I feel about cover bands, especially if they suck. Because they aren't all good. Mm -hmm. So every single song you did gave me some kind of an emotion. That's a good thing. Is that how you write your songs? Is because of an emotion? Yeah. And, okay, that's a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> I can... Do you want to hear my songwriting I, process? I do. So, that was my next question. Okay. So my songwriting process, um, I mean, I, I only really started writing songs around this time last year. Um, really? Yeah. I, but I've been writing an average of like one every couple weeks or so. I mean, I, I'm getting them out because I have a lot to say because I'm just starting out the, you know, I'm sure it's going to slow down at some point when I run out of material. Maybe not. <laughs> have, you met, have you met Terry with chance? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway um every week or two i just kind of think like i want to write a song and that's where it starts i think i want to write a song and when i was waist staffing um it would start at at night when i was clearing clearing stuff up and it was just me in my head and whatever now it's often like when i'm out doing drives when it's just me in my head i'm not sitting down writing or anything i'm just brainstorming um, and so it'll be like, okay, what do I want it to be about? And so then I'll go through a list of like things that I want it to be about. Do I want it to be a story? Do I want it to be about an emotion? Do I want it to be about, um, you know, whatever, uh, something that just happened in my life or something that happened years ago in my life, you know? And then once I come up with the, the object of it, then that will often spur the title and that will often spur the chorus. And then from the chorus, I go to the verses and then tune and lyrics often come at the same so, time. So the words to the chorus come first and then the tune? It depends on the song. Yeah, right? It depends on the song. Um, some of the songs, it'll be a tune in the, the making, kind mm -hmm. of. Like, I'll come up with some lines, and then I'll be like, ooh, that's a tune that would go well with that. But then I'll come up with another line, and I'm like, oh, but that's a tune that goes well with that. And then I'll fit it all together. It's, it, it's usually patchworky. Do you have any um, formal musical training? Uh, yeah, um, not really in the style of music that I do. Um, I, like I said, I was in orchestra. Right. Right. So I'm very well versed in classical music. What did you play in the orchestra? I played viola. Nice. Yeah, and I did that from fifth grade all through high school. Okay. I still play in the um, New London Community Orchestra. Nice. Yeah. So it's fun just to. It is. It's they're a great little orchestra. Yeah. And yeah. 
and they serve the community, and I love yes. that. I love it's that. not quite the um, sophistication that I'm used to. I mean, when I was in high school, I was, you know, doing solo and ensemble, and I was first chair in my section, and, you know, my school's chamber orchestra and all that, won right, awards right, right. and whatever. Um, whereas now I come to community orchestra, and it's just like, let's do some pop music. And, you know, it's mixed areas of um, expertise. You know, some people have been doing it for a few weeks. Some people have been doing it for years and years. So, so it's, maybe you should try out for the Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra. But see, I don't want to do that much um, effort, you know? Oh, Cause okay. That is, Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Because that is another thing. I'm doing so much with my life right now, you know. Um, I'm doing this. That's not a bad thing. Yes. Um, so I like the community orchestra because it allows me to just go once a week. I don't even really need to practice outside of that. And it just keeps me, you know, first involved. In it, involved. Yes. Um, so that I'm playing and I'm not just letting my instrument just sit and rot. So well, that's nice. <laughs> I can't see you doing that. I, I just yeah. can't see you doing that. Well, I did go like an entire year without playing at all. When I was How did in, that feel? I was in the Navy. Um, it, it was nice to get it back. It was nice to get it back. I'm sure. Yeah. But I mean, when it comes to like this kind of music, um, I'm completely self-taught in guitar. Um, and like I was never in any kind of choir or anything, although my whole family did sing. Mm -hmm. um, when growing up, like my favorite uh, family tradition for Christmas was when we would go caroling. I loved caroling. We would go to all of like the um, houses in our, our ward for church, you know. Yep. They would all look forward to us coming. Um, yeah, so like I, I love singing, but I'm the only one who's actually gone like an attempt at professional with it mm -hmm. out of everyone in my family. But yeah. Well, you're going there, and that's <laughs> that's awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, who do you think some of your influences are when it comes to the music that you're doing today? Well, it it. Um, I've listened to a lot of different genres of music. I think what got me inspired to start really songwriting again was um, there was this playlist that I found um, for someone that I, I knew online. Uh, she gave it to me. And it was all pop punk rock music, right? Okay. A genre that I'm not, I wasn't used to at all. Like I, um, I did like classic rock and lots of indie stuff. That's what I um, used to really like. But then she was the one who got me into pop punk rock stuff. Um, and uh, she wrote a story, and I read that story, and in it was a main character who played that playlist um, in like his own band and whatever, and I was just, it inspired me to start writing my own songs like that. Uh, so some of my songs are more inspired by that style, okay. but then some of them are inspired more like um, indie that I listen to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and like when I was a kid, uh, what really made me want to become like a singer-songwriter was uh, Grace Vanderwall. Because, um, you know, she's, we're the same age. So like when she was on AGT, when she was 12 years old, I was 12 years old and I saw her and I was like, hey, if she can do it. Right, you know? right, right, right. Yeah. I just uh, dropped a couple videos for a client of mine. Mm -hmm. Had to encourage him. Not sure where it's gonna go, but <laughs> AGT, it is what it is. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so coming from the indie perspective, um, do you feel like your music can inspire other people to do indie music? And when are you making a CD? You knew that was coming. Yeah. You knew that question was coming. <laughs> yeah, I would like to record my songs. I would really like to. I don't have the budget for it right now. Um, mm. And I don't really have um, the experience in knowing how to do that. I don't know where I'd even start, really. Um, so I've just I've been playing live, and I've been kind of looking around to see how I might record that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would like other people to hear my songs for sure, and I would love to inspire people to write uh, more indie music. I think it's a great um, genre. But okay, so mm -hmm. I have a friend. I have a friend, and he's he's in a band called Super Bald. Uh -huh. It's kind of punky, but he's a brilliant. He, he's a Grammy nominee. Just saying, that in itself should tell you that he knows what he's doing. And yeah. He just dropped. He just dropped another. I think this is seven, mm -hmm. seventh album, um, and this one he did all by himself in his production studio with nobody else. 
and it's brilliant. So um, I'll connect you guys. Okay. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. All right. See, I told you mm -hmm. I say that a lot. So um, when you are writing a song and you have found the tune and you know the theme, do you work hard or does it come naturally, the words fitting together? Does that just flow into you? Do you have like a muse that comes through you? It just comes you naturally, know? really. Really? Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> it, I mean, it takes practice. You know, like, um, I would write a lot of poetry when I was growing up. I mean, yep. I've, I've been writing my whole life. Yep. Um, I write a lot of fiction. Like, I'm, I'm writing a book right now. Um, but, like, uh, I've gotten into, like, spurts of poetry writing where I would just, like, write poem after poem after poem. Um, I wrote a lot in middle school. But now looking back on those, I'm like, those sucked. <laughs> you know? They probably don't suck. Well. They probably are just not what you want to write about right now. Yeah. It's just, it, they're not structured, okay. you know? Um, songwriting is more structured, and I think it's easier for me to find structure when I'm songwriting, you know? Okay. Um, so, like, when I started really writing my own songs, then... So do you think that songwriting has to be structured? Have you heard Patti Smith? It doesn't have to be structured. Have you heard Patti Smith? <laughs> have you seen some of her poetry? Uh -huh. I think no. no, no structure, no form, mm -hmm. brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Emily Dickinson, no structure, no form, brilliant. Take those people, Sylvia Plath. The thing is, though, I think there are exceptions to the rule. Like them? Yes. All three of them, yes. right? Okay. I think, I think it's like um, finding structure when you're writing music makes it easier in the writing process. Um, at least that's, that's how I found it in my experience. Um, but that's not necessarily how it always has to be. Uh, like, with any kind of writing, they always say, you know, l learn the rules in order to break them, you know? Ah, yeah. Yeah, because then, then you can make a stylistic and then you can tell, show people that you know what you're doing instead of just like, you're doing these weird things because you're an amateur, you know? Oh, I don't think you come across as an amateur. <laughs> not, e not even a little bit. Um, do I think you need some polish? <laughs> A little bit but I think that what you're doing is going to give you that and I think that you have things to look forward to as you move forward in in your career I think that you need to get out there and find more open mics and even better than that find places where you can sit and play and maybe put some change in your pocket um, have you been in the Telegraph the Telegraph is the re do you really have to kick me um, the Telegraph is the record store on Bank Street, mm -hmm. and Rich lets people come in there and play, and sometimes pays them. So you want to go in and you want to say, hey, Rich, Dot, tell me to come talk to you. That's what you want to do. All right. Because that's what I do. And Rich will let you play, and if he pays you, that's cool. If he doesn't pay you, it's you playing by yourself for people that love music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's a great place. The record store is, is a great place to, uh, to do that. So, that being said, you had, told okay. me, you had told me that you have another song to play. And I'm mm -hmm. going to go live. So, will you go over and get ready and play us a song? Sure. I'll go live. And while she's doing that, I want to tell you all ha, that it is still summertime. I really want you to be careful of your doggies on the hot tar. And if you have children, please be careful of their feet on the hot tar. Take care of your neighbors, especially if they're elderly. Why? Because it's our job as a community. You know that. And you know how I feel about it. I say it every week. So, needless to say, Alex is going to take us out with a song. I'm going to go live. and. You can, um, oh, I don't want me on the live. Go ahead. Take us out with the song there, my friend. So this is a song um, that I actually wrote for my dad. Uh, we had a little bit of a falling out not too long ago. Um, and this was written kind of in the middle of that. 
Uh, yeah, so this is, this is for him. And it's called Tell Me. When they ask for luck, you show me war and strife. Learn it's better to think and try than hope and pray. If I'm magic in numbers and logic in dreams, you might have fooled me, but said to me, I know you will be my dream. Why must you take all that away? Why must I have the only say? I don't believe in lies, so let's talk. I've been hating my body and unable to share. Thought that you wouldn't mind me, should have held my breath. It was sad I had people, I was lonely in stride. Wanted you there hear from me, but you turned away your head. Why must you take all of that away? Why must I have the only say? I don't believe in lies, so let's talk. Don't you love me? I know you love me. Why don't you love me? Say you love me. You 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 say you love me. I know you. I know you do. It'll always be your charge. It doesn't have to change. Please tell me. Why must you take all of that away? Why must I have the only say? I don't believe in lies. Don't believe in lies. Don't you love me? I know you love me. Why don't you love me? I know you do. I know you.